Today's project is a spice shaker one piece style. Japanese have many specific pots which have a dedicated purpose. That's why the Japanese kitchen cupboard is full of tableware. This is one of them we use for seven flavors spice. You can use it for sea salt or mixed herbs also. This will be a cute accent on the dining table. I use 300 gram stoneware sanded buff clay on the small throwing bat. I make a cone shape to equalize the clay and also center it. A small size clay is easy to press so I need to be careful not to make a mushroom shape. My left hand is guarding the side of the clay to maintain the shape. Alternatively, this can be done just by the inside of the right hand palm. I have a weak joint, so I need to use my palm edge. The disc size is seven centimeter, which is slightly wider than my four fingers. Making a center hole with my right thumb. Keep the bottom thickness at 5 mm, then slide the thumb outward along the bottom. When the thumb's tip reaches to the wall, my right middle finger sets the opposite side of the wall and lightly stretches the wall. Compressing the bottom with a wooden whip, which prevents an S crack and also measures the internal diameter. The rib is 5 cm and I need 6 cm for the internal space. My right ring finger is at the bottom's 9 o'clock position. My left middle finger tip is the opposite side of the wall, slightly higher. Most of the cases, I use this form regardless of the size. Same action again. My both index fingers are guarding the wall to go straight up. Both thumbs are connected to make two hands in one tool. Then compress the edge to keep a firm edge. I need to use a wooden stick next so give plenty of water to reduce conflict. Adjust the wall to straight before I use a wooden tool. Set the wooden tool corner at the inside bottom corner. My left hand is flipped over and the index finger is pressing against the bar. Keep this pressure and slowly slide the left hand up to stretch the wall. At the beginning, I kept the wooden bar still, only the left hand moves up. This helps the stability of the bottom as the cylinder gets higher. I need more height as the cylinder loses it for closing the top and also an overlap joint I make later. I mark 3 cm below the top as the closing point. Before closing, ensure to remove all excess water and only apply water to the outside of the wall. Using both hands to create a diamond shape, begin squeezing the cylinder from the marked point. As the hands reach the top, use my right fingers to pinch the wall's edge, smoothing the gathered clay. Keep my left hand slightly higher than the right to create a spiral effect 
facilitating upwards clay movement. Support the wall from the inside, adjusting the angle of the wall rather than stretching it to close the top. During the closing process, the shoulder often pressurate. It's a good idea to adjust the shape at this stage. Close the top from all directions. Once closed, it becomes easier to manipulate the shape. Take extra time to cut off excess clay. Cutting too early may result in a small hole that is challenging to fix. Even without hole, the top clay may become too thin, so investing extra time is worthwhile. For a flat top, gently press the top after cleaning the side wall. Then return to smoothing the side. As the pot appears plump, releasing the air is necessary to achieve a slim shape. Observe the top starting to flatten as I press the side wall. Before it flatten completely, swiftly close the air vent hole. Using takeaway chopstick to create a groove, use the angle side against the clay and gently push. Notice the pot starting to belly out. If the wall is thick, trimming can be done when the pot is rather hard. However, for this thin pot, releasing air again is necessary. Clean the bottom before using a string to separate it from the butt. This ensures a clean circle at the bottom, important for tap centering during later trimming. When the pot reaches the leather hard stage, it's time for trimming. Wet the bottom of the clay for better attachment to the wheel. Place the pot at the center and press the bottom corner to the wheel to secure it. Lightly trim the surface before separating the lid.
using a needle, I cut along the upper line of the groove. To maintain its position, my right middle finger holds the needle steady while I slowly push it into the spinning clay. Trimming the cut edge ensures its level as I'll use it as a chuck for trimming the lid. The silver metal consists of two discs with a bearing between them, while the top disc remains under my finger, the bottom one spins with the clay. The spinner helps distribute pressure evenly. For trimming the thin edge, I prefer using a thin bamboo stick over the metal tool which tend to chip the edge. Now I trim the lid catch and polish the surface to compress the clay. Spinning the wheel while holding the lid ensures a better fit. Finishing the outside, make a good match between the lid and the body. Adjusting the position and the trimming again ensures a better fit. The top shape is a matter of preference. Sometimes I make it flat, and other time I create a dome. Cleaning the bottom line separates the jar from the wheel neatly. Placing the metal kidney firmly on the wheel, then sliding it under the jar to separate the jar from the wheel. Carefully removing the lid and placing the jar upside down for trimming the bottom require gentle handling, especially due to the thin lid catch. Securing the position with three pieces of clay and placing them onto the wheel first ensures stability. Trimming a corner at an angle provides Chipping protection. Polishing a centimeter as a footring. Then applying slight pressure towards the center to make this part higher than the footring when it is right side up. This ensures stability and table friendliness. With the lid and the jar fitting nicely, now we move on to the last step in the greenware stage.
Mark the desired slot size and carefully cut it using a very thin blade. Using a thick blade may risk breaking the thin lid catch. Creating one slot in the lid completes this step of the process. Consider making two or three slots to create additional matching points with the lid slot, enhancing the overall functionality. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this pottery process. The One Piece series remains my favorite technique. Please leave your comments. They serve as motivation for my next video. Happy creating and I look forward to seeing you in the next pottery video.